Hey, Beat Buddy users, it is the Municipal Man of Mystery for municipalman.com. And today we are looking at how to add accents to your Beat Buddy songs. If you've done this before, you probably know how to do it and you can uh, skip this. However, um, there are some troubleshooting and uh, problem solving techniques in this um, little segment. Also, we're going to look at how to exploit some of the creative possibilities of this feature. If you have a beat buddy and you have the outboard pedal, you know if you hit one of the switches, you can activate an accent sound ad lib during a song. Usually this is done to add a cymbal crash. However, you can add all manner of sounds and clips and sound effects and things like that. So there are a host of possibilities you can extract from this feature. And that's what we're going to look at today. So without further ado, let's get into the first part of it, which is simply adding an accent to your Beat Buddy song. Take it away. All right, let's start with the basics. If you came here just to find out how to add an accent to a Beat Buddy beat in Beat Buddy Manager, here's where the magic happens. Let's open up Beat Buddy Manager. I've got a project already opened. If you haven't done that yet, you can go up here and open an existing project you may have, or you can start a new project and that will open a blank slate of songs and you'll have to create a song to get that going. I've got my municipalman.com selection of songs uh, open here, so I'm going to use the uh, bubblegum pop beat for no particular reason, except it's there and it's fun. To add an accent, we're going to look over here where it says accent hit, appropriately named. And if you're not sure what's going on here at the moment, uh, these are your MIDI uh, loops that make up your beat arrangement or drum arrangement. And here we are adding an accent to that that you can activate with the outboard pedal. So we're going to click on the box there for the part of the song we want to add the accent to. And you'll notice it takes me to my wave sources, which is the folder where I keep my wave files. Yours may be stored somewhere else. It depends on how you have arranged it. But if you have the Beat Buddy library, it comes with an assortment of wave sources. And here are a couple of them here. And these are symbol crashes that you can add. So these are a Zildjian 16 and 17 inch and there's a more subtle um, medium wet sort of version of that. If you're using a Mac and you want to preview them, you can use the finder here. I think this beat has something a little more subtle, so I'm going to try this one. That sounds appropriate. So I'm going to hit open. And there it is. And you can preview the sound by clicking the play arrow in the corner. But if you want to hear it in context, you're going to go over here to the simulator and you'll notice it has a simulated pedal and one of these will activate the sound. You can set it up for either, uh, but in the simulator, it's the left side. Oh, I haven't started it yet. So let me save that and... And there you go. So there's the simple nuts and bolts to adding an accent if you've never done it before and you just wanted to go through the process. We're going to get into this uh, process a little more deeply as we move through this uh, little tutorial here. So uh, if you want to stick around and uh, learn some other things about the process, then let's move on. Okay, now that we've covered the nuts and bolts of adding an accent to a Beat Buddy Manager song, let's think of the uh, creative prospects of this um, whole operation. Remember, an accent is a WAV file, which means it's an analog recording, and that can be a recording of anything. Uh, it could be you singing in the shower, a sound effect, another instrument, uh, anything you like. And uh, so we can create a sample 
that we can use uh, during uh, play to um, accentuate something, create an effect, add a sound, something like that. So let's go through that process. The first thing we need to do is to create a wave sample or find one. You can look online. That you, you might find a website that offers sound effects or instrument samples. The BeatBuddy library comes with uh, the symbols, as we've seen. What we're going to do is create our own. And so we're going to take a sample of something and add it to a BeatBuddy song and see if we can make that work. Let's talk software. If you're using Logic or you have a, a DAW like Reason or Pro Tools or uh, Reaper or something like that, they have sophisticated editing and that's usually the best situation because it makes life a lot easier and the workflow is a lot more efficient. So if you're using that a lot or doing this a lot, uh, that might be the way to go. If you're just trying to create one, there are other methods. You can try using QuickTime. Uh, QuickTime has some limitations though. But most people have QuickTime and it's free. If you uh, open up uh, something you would like to take a sample from. So I have a song here I've opened in QuickTime. It allows you to trim down uh, using these sliders here. And you can fiddle with this for a bit just to get it right. And I'm using uh, Bloody Well Right by Supertramp, which is a classic because I just want to grab this little sound clip here. And I'm going to have to keep adjusting that to make it work. Right there, okay, so you get the point. The limitation with QuickTime is the export uh, problem. When you try to export this clip after you save it, uh, it will only allow you to save it as an MP4. So if you're starting with a sample that is an MP3, MP4, or M4A, or something like that, you have to have some means to convert it to a WAV file, and that might mean sourcing out some software that can do that. Uh, I'm not sure uh, what that would be. So it adds an extra layer of work that you may or may not want to do. All right, I'm going to use GarageBand because most people who at least have a Mac have GarageBand, uh, but you are going to need something uh, similar to that. Normally I use Logic. Uh, but GarageBand is a lot more accessible. So if I open GarageBand uh, and start a new project, it's going to prompt me to create a track, and we're dealing with audio here, so let's choose that. And I'm going to... Oh, see, now it's doubling everything. Let me turn that off. And I'm going to drag the song file into the GarageBand lane here. And then we can see the WAV file. Let's use the editor because it's a lot more precise. And we're going to stretch this out so we can really uh, drill down on the details. So this is the clip we want to grab. First thing we can do is get rid of this information from the back because we don't need it. We just want this. And now we have to deal with um, this bit here. Because when you play a sample, it, it plays whatever is there in the audio file, and it starts at the beginning, which is here. So it's going to play this lag here. And a couple of milliseconds of lag is not always a problem. It's sometimes desirable. You might not want your beat to sound too robotic and on time, and sometimes uh, a looser arrangement uh, sounds the best. But that's a really a matter of taste, and you'll have to you know, fiddle around with that and try to make it work. But the attack on the note is also an issue because the main part of the note is here where it peaks. And so I'm going to try to... I'm going to remove the first portion of this and I'm going to drag this up to the front. All right, there's our sample. All right, so let's export this. With uh, GarageBand, you use Share, Export Song to Disk. And this will give us the option to save it as a wave. 
We look at the specs here, it gives you the choice of a 16 or 24 bit. 16 is fine, just make sure you choose wave because that's what you want. And you hit export. All right, let's go find our wave file and add it to our Beat Buddy uh, song. Here is the wave file. Let's give it a name. We'll call it Bloody. Okay, we'll open up Beat Buddy Manager. I've changed the song to 6-8 Soup because I think it will lend itself to this sample a little better. And we go back to our accent. We choose bloody.wave. Oh, hey. and we have an error file or an error notice. So I intended this to happen because I knew it was going to. So here's the problem you might run up against. When you open it up in Beat Buddy Manager, you may get this... Um, error notice. And there is a solution to this. Uh, I, I forget exactly why this is uh, doing this. I read about it a couple years ago. Uh, but basically the name of the in the file uh, is not readable by Beat Buddy Manager. So what we need to do is remove the um, unnecessary uh, information in the file itself. And there is a way to do that. So I'm going to go back to bloody.wave and I'm going to open it with a, an app called Tag Stripper. Tag Stripper you can get from the App Store. And you just hit Strip and it will save it uh, where you would designate it to go. So it should be here in my samples, in my wave sources. You'll notice that the information suddenly appeared because it wasn't there before after we strip it. 44.1 kilohertz is standard and the sample bit rate is 16. Okay, it seems to be working and that's what we want. So we're gonna add this to our Beat Buddy song and see if it works. Now remember, we can preview it by hitting the play arrow. Sounds good. But if we wanna hear it in context, we're gonna use the simulator. Right, so the timing is uh, not exact. I might go back and trim that down a little bit just to get it as precise as possible. But you can see the creative possibilities here. You can add a little sample that you can actuate ad lib during your song while you're playing, and it creates a little dynamic and maybe a little surprise for your audience if that's what you're doing. And you can have a lot of fun with that, of course, and add samples that, uh, you know, really create an effect. So there you go. I hope that opens up something for you to think about. So we had a little fun with that. The last thing we're going to do today is Look at how to create a wave sample that we can use as an accent, starting with a MIDI sound. If we go back to our GarageBand project, we're going to start a new track. Uh, but this time we're going to hit Software Instrument. All right, so now that we have um, a software instrument which will allow us to create MIDI sounds, we uh, can basically use any sound instrument that we like. I'm going to choose to go into the world sounds and uh, use something bombastic from the Chinese uh, sounds here. All right, so now we need to generate a MIDI note, and we can do that very easily just by using musical typing. And this allows us to use our keyboard as a recording device or an in input device. So you can go up and down the keyboard and find the one you like. That sounds fun. I think I'm going to use that because it's um, bombastic. Okay, so let's hit record. That generates our note. So we want to bring that up to the front. 
When you get the note up to the front, it's a good idea to hit quantize, and that will nudge the note to the very beginning of the lozenge, the loop. All right, so now we can export that note. We hit share, export song to disk, and again, it gives us the choice to create a wave file at 16 bits. I'm just gonna give this a name of gong. There we go. So we still have to go back through the process of using Tag Stripper. So let's open that uh, sound with Tag Stripper. And I have it set to save in my wave sources. So I'm gonna go back there and I'll just look for Gong, there it is. All right, let's open that up in Beat Buddy Manager. So I've chosen a new beat, a Diet Pop Beat, just because, uh, I don't know, it was there. Again, hit Accent, find the file we want, hit Open, preview it if you like. All right, let's hear it in context. This is going to be ridiculous, but, uh, you know, whatever. Save it, of course. Okay, obviously uh, a gong does not suit that song very well, uh, but you get the point. You can create any sound you like from MIDI and just uh, export it as a WAV file and uh, run it through Tag Stripper, and that will work as an accent. Well, there you have it, everyone. I hope you found that edifying. If you could do me the usual favors of liking and subscribing, you know I appreciate it. Any questions or comments, of course, go in the comment section and I get back to everyone. Don't forget to go to municipalman.com and check out some of the beats available for your beat buddy there in the ever-growing library of uh, song and drum arrangement choices, uh, however you want to call that. And that's it for me. I'm signing off, so I'll see you all next time. Take it easy.